Welcome back to Chisago Capital Connection. I'm Matt Swenson. This is State Representative Jeremy Kalen. Welcome back, Jeremy. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here again. Yeah, and a lot of stuff you folks are doing at the Capitol, so we've got a lot to talk about today. And one of the biggest things you folks are focus focused on here at the State Capitol is the $1 billion budget deficit. You folks resolved a $6.4 billion deficit last year, and because of the failing economy, we're looking at another $1 billion deficit this year and another $5.8 billion deficit next year. And I wonder if you can help explain to folks why this is happening. Well, I th think uh, you know you threw out a lot of numbers there. The mm -hmm. the challenge we had last year for the two year cycle, and and um, you know that already the bottom sort of dropped out of the economy at that point, and it was largely due to to uh, greater um, uh, pressure on our human services, uh, resulting unemployment, for foreclosure crisis. So a little bit more spending required uh, from the state to make sure that. Uh, that you know, as people's lives, uh, you know, sort of were on the edge of hell, that didn't actually go into hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. That it really was uh, manageable for families. Mm -hmm. You know, there's real pain out there, and the state needs to be part of the solution there in a reasonable way. And then the other pieces, of course, with uh, with less uh, uh, spending going on in the private sector, people buying less, and then of course lower income taxes because of lower un lower employment. The bottom dropped out of the uh, of the revenue picture as well. So. You know, less taxes coming into the state, and then a little bit more of the need to make sure that public safety and, and other things are met because of foreclosure, et cetera. Um, it's kind of uh, double whammy that the Great Recession has really provided to Minnesota over the last couple of years. And the state is always a little bit of a lagging indicator because of uh, how family budgets get stressed first. Mm -hmm. And then it takes a little while for, uh, for the state's budgets to, to see sort of the macro picture. And so the bottom's really dropped out. and. Um, that $6.4 billion deficit we had for the next two years, you know, it got a billion dollars worse. Mm -hmm. And while we solved the, the first 6.4, the revenue continued to drop mm -hmm. over the last year. And so we've gotten uh, another billion dollar, $994 million problem to solve. Um, the governor signed the bill that we passed um, with bipartisan votes last year, or last week, excuse me, uh, cutting $312 million out of uh, some core areas, including the two areas that I serve on in budget committees, state government, which we cut pretty deeply, uh, kind of the bureaucracy administration, and then the Department of Commerce, the uh, energy projects. You know, we actually went through and with a real scalpel. I'm really proud of going line by line um, in both of those areas and mm -hmm. contributing to this $312 million fix so far. Mm -hmm. We have some more work to do, but uh, things are looking promising for uh, solving this $994 million uh, challenge with uh, a little bit of shared sacrifice, I'd describe it. Everybody in the state helping to uh, come up uh, with solutions and, and pitch in a little bit. And you're working quicker than a lot of other times uh, when we face real serious deficits in this state, getting a lot of work done already. I think it's important to note that yes, you cut in 10 specific budget areas uh, just last week in this mm -hmm. budget bill that the governor signed, but you actually increased funding for veterans in Minnesota, right. and that's more important than ever right now. Yeah, I think that we recognize that uh, we're still in, in two wars, winding down one in Iraq, uh, uh, you know, knock on wood, that, uh, that our service members come home safely, uh, but uh, actually deepening our involvement in Afghanistan and the Minnesota National Guard and, and our reserves are, are deeply enmeshed in, in those conflicts, and we need to care for them when they come home. It's, it's our most solemn obligation that we have, and I'm proud that we have been able to meet this budget challenge while still uh, maintaining those priorities. And with another uh, $650 million left to cut in the state budget, uh, you're still looking at uh, some uh, very important decisions to make here in the next coming weeks. Yeah, we have a lot of work left to do on human services, on education, et cetera. It's, uh, there's a lot, to, lot of work uh, still ahead. I think we're um, still sorting out what's, uh, what's coming from the federal government as well. And so uh, working uh, bipartisanly with the governor and with minorities in the House and Senate, uh, you know, I think we're on a good track so far. We have more work to do. And I know that when the uh, session adjourns sine die, uh, this year will be your last year serving in the legislature on behalf of Chisago County. Yeah, it was a really tough decision. My wife and I decided to not seek a third term um, in the Minnesota House uh, representing Chisago County. It's been an incredible honor and privilege. And we got married uh, after my first session in 2007, actually 11 days after the 35W bridge collapsed. And, you know, as an architecture student, uh, somebody who understands engineering, I had to turn to my wife and say, honey, you know that part-time job I have? Well, you know, it's uh, actually at the center of an international disaster and I have 
one of the uh, few backgrounds that can really help interpret what's going on. And um, you know, I, my wife has been a, a saint, um, sticking with me, and and it's a real family commitment we make. Um, but she's an OBGYN who delivers babies at Abbott and Southdale hospitals, and a couple times has gotten caught in rush hour traffic, uh, getting down to deliveries or. You know, the unexpected things that happen when you're an OBGYN. And Matt, you and I can't understand no. <laughs> the kind of stress and uh, physical and emotional stress that comes with, uh, with childbirth. And, and um, you know, so as we recognize that, uh, you know, that she really loved her work and I can find other ways to serve, we're probably going to move a little closer to, to her hospitals. But uh, it's definitely a very bittersweet decision. I feel good about having my family priorities in the right place. But, gosh, I really love, uh, love this job. I love serving my neighbors as their voice in the Minnesota House. And, and to be honest, I love as much uh, that people agree with me. I also love how much people disagree with me. And we have really vigorous debates about what's the, the right course for the future of the state. You know, there's still uh, six or eight weeks more of session to go and mm -hmm. a lot of work left to be done here as well as uh, the constituent service work that's so important. So I'll still be focused on that for the next year and then don't have a job lined up, don't have a next step figured out other than uh, then hopefully my wife will be a little happier and we'll, uh, we'll get to spend more time together. Well, you've done a lot of great work for the people of Chisago County, the people of Minnesota, moving our state in the right direction. Whoever comes next will have big shoes to fill in Chisago County here at the legislature. So thank you for your service, sir. And thank Appreciate you for that. tuning in at home. We'll see you next time on Chisago Capital Connection.